Jared did that. He's in Poughkeepsie, New York. Hey, Jared, what's up? Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me on the show today. Sure, man. How can we help? So I'm a second generation of a manufacturing business. Um, we've got a top line of about 12 million, about 70 people. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in the business for the last 10 years or so. And after losing my father last year, who founded the company, I'm now at the helm of the business. Uh, I've been working to improve the culture of the business. And I feel like some of our team members who've been with us for a long time are not pulling their weight in terms of work ethic and the culture that I want to build moving forward. How old are you? At what point do I? 27. Wow. At what point do I make a hard decision? (laughs) You've been through a wild year. You must have been scared to death part of this year. Yep. Uh, We're doing it. (laughs) Uh, So my question is, at what point do I make the hard decisions to change some staff despite their longevity? Mm. Well, um, the good news is, is that your dad mentored you well. I can hear it in your voice that this is a painful thing. <laughs> yeah. Am, am I right? You are. Yeah, because if you were just a punk kid that got daddy's business, you wouldn't be worried about how you feel about this. You would have just executed someone, right? And so right. that means you're a good man and you're a good leader and you're a kind guy but you're also strong enough uh, young leader to say, I might have to make some changes even though it hurts. So just, just verifying where you are, I'm hearing that already listening to you and the way you put the story together. So congratulations. Um, there's nothing you're going to do here that's going to be easy or clean or that everybody's going to go along with or understand. You're going to be the only one on the planet that has all the information and can make the accurate judgment about your decision. Other people are going to make judgments about your decision and their opinion doesn't count. So be ready for that. Yeah. The only thing I would concern me is rocking the boat too much to where I just, you know, well, it doesn't rock the the boat too much. If you observe that someone isn't working hard and you confront them about working hard and saying, my dad loved you, he taught me to love you, and I love you, but you can't stay here if you're not going to work hard. And I'm developing a new culture here where we're going to be a little harsher, a little not a harsher, harsher is not the right word. We're going to demand uh, excellence of each other, myself included, and that includes a work ethic. And so if you want to be part of this team going forward, your work ethic's going to improve and your attitude's going to improve. If you don't want to be a we, that's who we are. We can work that out right now, and I'll help you gracefully retire. (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. That's the conversation, and that's exactly how you say it. And it's, um, you know, I honor you. My dad honored you. This makes this conversation hard, but it's still necessary because you're setting a standard that no one else, that I don't want everybody else to do here. And yeah, uh, that's, that's what I need. You know, I can't do that. Even though I love you, I can't do that. I can't let you, I can't sanction this because it sends a signal to everyone else that you are in a separate class of people somehow, and you're not, and I'm not. I have to do work too, and you have to do your work, you know? And so, uh, but you may not want to work for me. You may, you may, you know, your time here may be done because you don't want to work for the kid, and I can accept that too. You can just say that these are things you should say is what I'm saying, all right? Sure. So, so my son is a little bit older than you. He became the president of Ramsey last year. He and I are running this together right now. But um, that's the type of conversations he would have to have as well. Um, and, and what's interesting is he sees things here that I don't see. My eyes are a little bit blinded by my loyalty to somebody who's been with me 20 years. Right. But he's not as blinded by that. And that's where, that's the seat you're sitting in. And it doesn't make you wrong and it doesn't make your dad soft. It just makes him loyal 
to the guys that he wants to dance with the girl that brought him to the party. He didn't want to just chop people's heads off, right? And I and you don't either, but you're seeing no, this you're seeing this with clearer eyes than your dad did. Yeah, you take off the rose colored glasses and things are a little different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well you just don't have the you know, you don't have the twenty years with this guy that you're talking yeah. about. He does your dad did. And it just mm-hmm. makes it, it makes it even harder. It's hard for you, but for your dad, if he were here, it'd be triple hard for him. Yeah, I'm sure. For me, it's about building a, a, a place of teamwork where yeah. everyone. Well, wants for me to too, the same or thing. for your, your dad would say the same thing, but it's, it's just, man, it, the, our, uh, loyalty bone in small business is our greatest asset and our greatest liability. And so, That's a good um, way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be loyal to people because corporate America just pisses on them, you know, and we don't mm-hmm. do that. We, we hurt when we talk about this kind of stuff. Our, your heart's hurting. My heart's hurting talking with you about it because I know how it feels. <laughs> I've been there myself. Um, I've been there this year making these kinds of decisions and, and walking with my son doing it. So I can't imagine, you know, you, you standing there at 27 doing this. So I think you're a stud. I think you're going to do it right. But um, uh, Alan Malaloy that ran Ford spoke to us at Entree Leadership a couple of years ago, and I picked this up from him. It's, it's the quintessential thing. He just said, all the regional managers at Ford are going to be in a meeting on Tuesday. And a guy called up that was regional manager and said, you know, Alan, I can't make it. I got this and this and this going on. And he said, oh, that's okay. But all the regional managers at Ford – are going to be at a meeting on Tuesday. And the guy goes, well, I can't do it. And he goes, I know it's fine, but you need to know that all the regional managers, <laughs> meaning that you're not going to be one anymore. If you're not here, you know, because yeah. I just told you what the regional managers are going to do. If you want to be a regional manager, you're going to be here Tuesday. That's what he was saying. And, and if you want to be on this team, we're going to strive for excellence and have a work ethic. And I don't know if you want to do that or not. With dad's passing and me coming in, you may not want to be in this transition that we do where we turn up the heat about three notches on each other. I'm going to work super hard and I'm going to need everybody else in here to do that. And as one of the guys who's been here the longest, you got to help me set the tone and you may not want to do that. If you don't want to do that, let me help you figure out a way. I'm going to bless you with some money and an announcement of your retirement and honor you as being one of the people who helped form this company and build it to this point. And I'm going to say wonderful things about you and you're going to leave. Yeah, that's to the point, huh? <laughs> and, 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 you know, he may not want to, but he might go, you know what? I have been screwing around and I'm a better man than that. And I'm going to quit screwing around and I'm going to step in here, Jared, and I'm going to help you because I loved your dad and I love this place and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to step up. Yeah. He might step up. You might, he might, his honor might stick out, you know, but, um, sure. but if it doesn't, you're doing the right thing. And one year later, not a soul on the planet will remember this transaction, except you and the guy, no one on your team will remember it. Your mom won't remember it. His mom won't remember it if she's alive, you know, and so on. Right. I mean, nope. The, 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 what I always think of these things with more drama inside of my head, like it's going to have this lasting effect or something. It, it's like, it's amazing when you're gone, nobody notices. It's just, it's kind of sad, but, um, <laughs> we just go on to the next thing, you know, and, and you yeah. don't tell that guy that, but I mean, in your mind, don't let the drama get too big because a year from now, it'll be a distant, distant memory. Be kind, be firm. Uh, on severance, I'm always overly generous for someone like this. And let me tell you what, why it has nothing to do with the guy. It's selfish on my part because when I'm 82 or 92 laying on my deathbed, I don't want to think I should have been more generous. I always want to be overly generous and then I don't have to worry about it. And so our severance over the years has kind of been dumb at times. It's been too much. <laughs> But it's all just so I don't have to think about it again. Because it's not about what you pay this guy. It's about he needs to freaking do his work. Yeah, absolutely. The implications are not the dollars you give him. You give him an extra few thousand dollars more than he probably should have gotten in severance, you're going to make that back in a month. 
with increased productivity because everybody else is going to go, dad, gum, Jared's letting people go that don't work. Right. Because you're sending a message to the whole team because they know why he left when he leaves because they know he doesn't work. Mm -hmm. They just wonder if you see it. That's the team. Yeah. Does that help you? Yeah, it does. It's uh, it's I guess it's a tough reality you have to face, and um, I'm proud of you for those, facing it, for and your dad's proud of you. Yeah, thanks. Hey, thanks for calling in, man. You're the kind of people who run the kind of businesses that cause America to work. Well done, brother. Work literally and work metaphorically. Very, very well done. Good stuff. This is how it's done, boys and girls. This is how small business works. That guy right there, 27 years old, taken for over for his dad, passing away a year ago. Wow. 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 This is the Entree Leadership Podcast.